In this video, we're going to see how to calculate a scalar line integral. So we have some scalar function of several variables, and we are integrating along some curve. Uh, the specific example we're looking at is the integral of the function 7 x y to the fourth. Uh, and the curve we are integrating on, the line of the line integral, is the right half of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4. So in step one, you're going to need a parameterization of the curve. And for the uh, circle, uh, you can use R cosine theta, R sine theta, right? So if I had x squared plus y squared, sine squared. So a circle centered at the origin, radius R, um, would have a parameterization uh, R cosine t, r sine t. So for our specific example, um, the radius is 2. And so it'd be 2 cosine t, 2 sine t. All right, once you have that parameterization in step two, you want to take the derivative of that vector function and get r prime. So just take the derivative of each component with respect to t, the parameter. Uh, derivative of 2 cosine t with respect to t is negative 2 sine t. And the derivative of 2 sine t with respect to t is 2 cosine t. In step 3, we find the magnitude of the derivative r prime from step 2. So take that vector function and find its magnitude. Magnitude of a vector function is the square root of the sum of the squares of its components. Um, you can see I have this set up where it could be um, a three-dimensional vector function. You could do this uh, as a space curve or a function of three variables. Here, it's just a plane curve or a function of two variables. Um, but all this could be generalized to higher dimensions. And so we would take those component functions, negative 2 sine t, and 2 cosine t and square those, add them together, and take the square root. Now you want to simplify your results. Um, here you get 4 sine squared plus 4 cosine squared, uh, which is just 4, and square root of 4 is 2. All right, so that magnitude of r gets put in there. You can see that appearing uh, essentially like as a Jacobian type uh, quantity in the integral itself. Um, we also need to rewrite the function, um, right? This is f in terms of the parameter t. Um, and so to do that, you would use um, x is the first component of r and y is the second component of r. So go back to your f function, which is 7xy to the fourth. And replace x with the first component of r, which is 2 cosine t. And then y is the second component function of r. And then simplify that. Um, 2 to the fourth is 16 times another 2 is 32. Uh, times 7 should be 448. So that's f of r of t, right? Writing the function f in terms of the parameter t. So t has got to be the only variable here. That's what we end up wanting to integrate. Uh, now, it should have identified uh, a and b earlier when we did the parameterization um, in step one. a and b are the endpoints of the interval um, that gives you the circle. So. Remember, if you start off at t equals 0, then on the unit circle, or whatever circle, the circle centered at the origin, you're over here on the right side. Um, and so you want to go, so that's t equals 0. To get the right half, you'd want to go up to t equals pi over 2 and down to t equals negative pi over 2. And that'll get you the right half of the circle. Um, those obviously aren't the only values, they're just like the ones closest to t equals zero. Um, so we should have done that earlier, but we can do it now. 
right? Because that, that parameterization traces out the full circle centered at the origin radius two, um, and we just wanted the right half. So that's A and that's B. And those get used as the limits of integration, right? So we're now ready to put this all together and get our integral. So it'd be the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two, then put in the function f, which we found to be four, four, eight, cosine t, sine to the fourth t, and then put in the magnitude of our prime, which is an extra factor of two. Oh, I see, the 448 is includes the two. Sorry about that. Um, so two to the fourth is 16, times two is 32, times seven is 224. Seems while we're noticing that already, weren't you? Um, sorry about that. Should have actually done the calculation instead of just writing from my notes. So that gives you 224. When we multiply with the two there, it'll be 448. And then that brings us back to just a, a simple definite integral of one variable um, that you could have done with uh, knowledge from calc one or two, right? Um, so let's go ahead and bring that constant out front. So that is a 448 out front. Um, and then looking at cosine times sine to the fourth, um, the antiderivative would be sine to the fifth over five, right? So think of taking the derivative of sine to the fifth over five, uh, bring the five down and the fives cancel, and it's now sine to the fourth, and then the chain rule would give you a cosine. So um, we're going to evaluate that antiderivative at negative pi over two and pi over two. Uh, and those are different and non-zero values. So let's be careful with that. Uh, sine of pi over two is one. And then sine of negative pi over two is negative one. Right, so negative one to the fifth is negative one, but you're subtracting it. Um, and so you get one fifth plus one fifth. which is two fifths. <laughs> uh, and so your final result here is 896 over five, uh, which as a decimal is 179.2. Right, that is our result there. And we've got a couple options for validation um, that we can go through. Um, we can uh, do sort of this geometric interpretation of Let's uh, find the arc length of C, or at least an estimate of it, evaluate the function at several points, and then sort of do an average value um, of the function to get a, a measure of the integral. Um, so that's kind of our geometric approximation. Um, and then I'll show you how to do this with technology for another option. Um, now, arc length, there is a formula for arc length of a curve um, based on the parameterization, but um, this is a circle, and uh, we can just use a well-known geometric formula the arc length of a circle is the perimeter. Um, and for a circle of uh, radius r, it's 2 pi r. So when the radius is 2, like it is here, it would be uh, 4 pi. But it's half of a circle. And so the arc length is just 2 pi. Um, but you can actually use the formula uh, to get that result. Uh, if you need to. Now, what we want to do is get some values of the function uh, along this. And um, I think what we end up doing is uh, using this point here, right, which is 0, 2, and then using some point up here and some point down there. Um, oh, wait, now that's two, zero. So when x or y are zero, then the function itself is zero, right? So the function is zero at the top and the bottom and the right. Um, so those aren't going to contribute a lot uh, to this. Um, but I think you want to include at least one of those. So which one did I include? I included 
zero to I, so I included zero to uh, where it's going to be zero, uh, and then kind of picked the diagonal, uh, and then this point, and then this point. Um, now, you might be wondering about what about the points down here at the bottom? Well, the y values are going to be the same um, because they're just negative and it's y is raised to the fourth power. So uh, you can actually just use quadrant one values um, for this average. So anyway, you want to pick some nice points and you want to evaluate the function. So our function is 7x, y to the fourth. Um, and for instance, if we evaluate it at 0, 2, which is at the top uh, of the half of circle, uh, just replace x with 0 and y with 2. Uh, and of course, that gives you 0. And make similar evaluations for uh, this point, which is sort of at the 45 degree mark. Uh, and that's going to be about 40. And then you can do 30 and 60 degrees. So these numbers should look kind of like unit circle numbers, but they're all multiplied by 2 because we're doing a circle of radius 2. And that's about 63. You can use rounded values here because this is just going to be an approximation. Um, and how many of these you do is kind of up to you. Uh, I end up doing four values. Uh, and then what you want to do is average those numbers. So if you average these four values, you get a sense of the average value of the function, and it was about 29. So just add them all up, divide by 4. And then you take the average value, and you multiply by the arc length. Uh, and that should give you an approximation to this. So that is 29 times 2 pi, which is 58 pi, uh, which is about 179.2. So we end up with a very accurate estimate. Um, I fooled around with this a little bit um, uh, to try to get an accurate estimate. Uh, it's something you kind of get better at the more you do it. Um, but it should still be in the ballpark, even if you picked some lesser value, as long as you pick like four or five points uh, scattered evenly on there. Now, if you ended up picking uh, you know, this point, this point, and this point, and then like two others, those three zero values at the top, bottom, and right side of the circle are really going to skew things and kind of mess it up. And I think I might have done that first. You, you got to be thinking about stuff and how, well, the function's not really zero most of the time, so your points shouldn't be zero most of the time. But it is zero at the ends, and so I threw one of the zeros in there, right? Um, so a little bit of an art form there, something you get better at. Um, and if you fool around, you can get a really good approximation uh, like this one. Um, now that, again, that doesn't come out to be exactly 179.2, um, but it just rounds to one decimal place to match it, so. Uh, what about doing something more accurate uh, with technology? So for that, uh, we just go to Python here, and I've got some code uh, that will calculate a scalar line integral. So uh, we start by, we're using SymPy here, and we start by defining our parameter as a variable. So here's t defined. Um, then we define our parameterization um, of the curve, right? And so we would need to change this to 2 times cosine and then 2 times sine. Right? So there's our parameterized function. Uh, and then we have uh, SymPy takes the derivative of that for us. And then SymPy finds the magnitude of the derivative for us. Here's where we put in our function. It's already set up to be defined in terms of t here. So um, you could have Python doing that for you um, to avoid some mistakes. Um, but remember, we found this to be 224 times cosine uh, times sine to the fourth. Um, and then you can see that I multiply by the magnitude of r prime in the integration there. Um, and then we need to integrate from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. 
uh, using uh, NumPy prefix NP here um, because uh, we are doing a numerical. Actually, I mean, I guess maybe you could use SymPy here. I feel like we should be able to. Let's see what happens. SymPy is Pi should work there. No? It doesn't like that. Oh, I see. So I had this set up for a three component R function. So we need to get rid of that uh, right there. Didn't like that. So that is 179.2 with a fraction form we found, 896 over 5. Um, so that's another way you could validate. Um, just be sure to show that code and result if that's what you're doing. Um, and that'll do it for scalar line integrals. We'll look at vector line integrals in the next video. Thanks.